Lawmakers held a hearing Wednesday to address the rise of domestic terrorism in America. Experts on the topic appeared before the House Judiciary Subcommittee on Crime, Terrorism and Homeland Security. Testimony focused on the government's failure to adequately address white nationalism and domestic extremism in the years leading up to the attack on the Capitol. Last month's attack, fueled in part by white nationalism and anti-Semitism that has long thrived in our country, horrified us all. But for those of us who represent marginalized people, the violence did not surprise us because sadly it is not new. We are all too familiar with the ways in which white supremacy has long thrived in our country. We also know that for too long, the threat of white nationalist violence has been weaponized, not only by white supremacists, but also by laws and programs that target us rather than protect us. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins me now. Hi there, Nicole. So this hearing examined a number of events which took place long before the Capitol riot. What were some of those events and what policy changes were suggested to combat violent extremism moving forward? Yeah, so Elaine, this hearing really zeroed in on some of American history dating back through uh, the rise of the KKK, neo-Nazism in America and white nationalism. Uh, the 1995 Oklahoma City bombing was brought up quite a lot. Of course, we know that was the deadliest attack on U.S. soil prior to 9-11. There was also some discussion of some of the more recent upticks in hate crimes in the United States. We know that the FBI's annual Crime Statistics Act found in 2019 in its latest report, uh, you know, the latest statistics that were available, that there were 7,134 hate crimes in that year. That is a near high uh, in, you know, the FBI's history of taking in some of this data. Uh, that said, some of the suggestions that were made uh, moving forward, some of the policy ideas, improving some of this data collection around hate crimes. So, you know, as we just said, the FBI does uh, collect data. It solicits data from the uh, more than 18,000 law enforcement agencies across the country. But this is not mandatory, meaning that, you know, law enforcement officials don't have to hand over that hate crime data. Some of them don't have uh, the resources to collect that data um, in municipalities and states across the country. So really upping resources there. There was also discussion of the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act, which would establish offices to specifically combat domestic violent extremism at the Department of Justice, the Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI, with mandatory reporting to Congress. Lastly, you know, something we've heard a lot about, not just in this hearing, but uh, in the halls of Capitol Hill over recent weeks, was this commission, a commission that could look into what exactly happened on January 6th. There has been agreement on both sides of the aisle to establish this commission, but what Democrats and Republicans are currently trying to negotiate is what the structure of that commission will look like. So GOP lawmakers wanting equal representation of Democrats and Republicans on that commission and, and Democrats uh, wanting some of the members uh, of that commission to be chosen by President Biden, tilting the scale towards Democrats. Well, GOP lawmakers asserted that there is a significant threat posed by left-wing extremism. Nicole, how does that square with the intelligence and the Capitol riot? Yeah, so something we heard a lot from GOP lawmakers today, specifically uh, the ranking member on the Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan, and Congressman Andy Biggs, who does head up this subcommittee on crime, terrorism, and homeland security, uh, was Antifa, and, you know, specifically Antifa's involvement in capitalizing on some of the Black Lives Matter uh, protests that occurred over the summer. You know, that being said, uh, those GOP lawmakers were called out both by witnesses and Democrats on the other side of the aisle, uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee calling that comparison between January 6th and what we saw over uh, the summer a false equivalence. Now, you know, we should point out, too, uh, that Congressman Biggs right now is, uh, you know, was supportive of the Stop the Steal movement. Uh, he's part of a group of Republican lawmakers uh, who's under scrutiny over uh, his role possibly in the run-up to the January 6th riot. And just a bit of a fact check 
check here. We know that Antifa was not in any way responsible for the violence that occurred at the Capitol on January 6th. Based on witness accounts, our own witness accounts and others, court documents, you know, the charges issued so far. These were Trump supporters that were at the Capitol on January 6th, including members of far right extremist groups like the Oath Keepers, the Proud Boys and the Three Percenters. And Nicole, you know, we've heard some lawmakers talk about uh, moving past January 6th, but I wonder what U.S. intelligence agencies are saying about the current threat posed by domestic uh, terrorists. And what can you tell us about the response to that threat? Yeah, well, we know that the Department of Homeland Security issued a terrorism advisory just last month. It was its the first of its kind in over a year and the first uh, to really zero in on domestic violence extremism born out of the United States. Uh, we also know, based on a seven-page intelligence analysis issued this month by DHS and obtained by CBS News, uh, that domestic extremists will pose an increased threat to government facilities and personnel in 2021. Again, that is based on this DHS threat assessment, and it says that it is based on increased observ observable targeting of these entities in the last year and expected persistence of key drivers for potential uh, violence. I'm quoting that report there. You know, we also heard last week from a top Democrat on the House Armed Services Committee uh, saying that National Guard 4,900 uh, National Guard members have been requested to remain on Capitol Hill uh, through March 12th. We've, got, we've heard some pushback from lawmakers on Capitol Hill who are questioning why that presence is necessary. Also some pushback about uh, the barbed wire fencing that remains along the perimeter outside of the Capitol building. So ongoing discussions about whether or not that's necessary. And just yesterday, Former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sund, who appeared before Congress, uh, actually offered, you know, to give his advice on maybe a, a happy medium where, you know, he could advise on some of the security strategies, take down some of that barbed wire fencing, uh, but offer more security to the Capitol building than we saw in the run-up to January 6th. Nicole, I want to play some sound from Attorney General nominee Merrick Garland during his confirmation hearing Monday. Let's listen to that. The first attorney general appointed by President Grant to head the new department led it in a concerted battle to protect black voting rights from the violence of white extremists, successfully prosecuting hundreds of cases against uh, white supremacist members of the Ku Klux Klan. If confirmed, I will supervise the prosecution of white supremacists and others who stormed the Capitol on January 6th, a heinous attack that sought to disrupt a cornerstone of our democracy, the peaceful transfer of power to a newly elected government. So former President Trump downplayed the threat of white supremacy and domestic extremism, often at odds with the intelligence community. How is the Biden administration elevating this issue? Well, compared to his immediate predecessors, uh, President Biden was, you know, the only one to call out white supremacy by name in his inaugural address uh, on January 20th. He called out specifically political extremism, white supremacy and domestic terrorism, uh, calling it something America, quote, must confront and will defeat. And then the next day, President Biden on January 21st ordered the director of national intelligence to work with the FBI and the Department for Homeland Security to conduct a comprehensive assessment of the threat posed by domestic violence extremism. You know, we should point out that under the Trump administration, the Department of Homeland Security did issue uh, a threat assessment in 2020 outlining white supremacists as the most persistent and lethal threat to the homeland. But what we did not see under the Trump administration was a redirection of resources to confront that threat. Now, the the Biden administration does plan on expanding grants from the Department of Homeland Security to study 
and prevent domestic violent extremism. Last week, it tapped FEMA, uh, you know, to route some funding to states and cities in prevention of domestic violent extremist groups from growing. And we also heard in that testimony from Merrick Garland, not only about the 150 year history of prosecution of white supremacy, but also that his first priority, if confirmed as attorney general, would be supervising the prosecution of white supremacists and others who storm the Capitol on January 6th. So that commitment coming in loud and clear uh, from Judge Merrick Garland. All right, Nicole Skanga for us, Nicole, thank you. Thank you.